Yes. Of course, it's Macbeth, <laughs> but when you're from Possum Track, it's Macbeth. Yeah. That's right. Old Possum Track. Old Possum Track. Three people together make up one third of the population. Well, and and five, every five guys make up uh, half of the male population. How about ten guys make up half the male population? Yeah. <laughs> five out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> five guys got a hand on the joint green. <laughs> Tonight, y'all get to talk. I'm going to talk a little bit with the rest of it, y'all. Y'all get to talk. Y'all are the ones tonight. Uh -oh. So we get to talk? Okay, we're talking about God and we're talking about the Trinity. We've been talking about who God is and honestly, you've been getting some awesome, awesome theology, yes. 101. Matter of fact, some of it's more than 101. Some of it might be a little like 102, 103, but uh, still, because it's all been basic, but it's been above and beyond basic because because sometimes, even though we hear it preached, we don't always seem to absorb it as like we do when we're doing Bible study. And when you get a piece of paper in front of you, it makes a difference too. And so, uh, uh, you may have been hearing this stuff all this time. I know you've heard it because I've preached it on how many times, off and on. But again, sometimes it's hard to absorb it when the preaching is going on and you don't really get it. So here it is in front of you. Take it. And again, I challenge you, make you a little, get you a little notebook. You can buy one for a dollar at the Dollar Tree and cut you some holes in your paper, three holes in it, and stick it in there. Every Bible study, especially if you get a series, get that whole series and put it together because this is some good, good stuff. There, there, you know, there's people all over the world that would love to get their hands on something like this. Not because of it's from our church. I feel like any church that, that puts out Bible studies. Uh, I know when I went to do the librarian the other day and, and paid attention, they asked me that, well, I please fill up the car with these things? Because they said everybody still doesn't get a hold of them. And I said, well, I'll do the best I can. I'll, you know, I'll put them up there. I said, but well, I, I was busy trying to put daily breads up there and also trying to put up Bibles and uh, and other other assorted things so they can have a, a, you know, a, a lot of stuff to choose from. Variety. And variety, thank you. So, Every Christian church, God, who is he? And this is 7B. Next week we'll do 8. And I want you to think, we're almost through with this. Uh, we could go deeper, but I don't want to get so deep. Last night, last night I, I, I was tested and had to write an essay on, <laughs> believe it or not, my, because I'm going to Lee University, they are a Christian-based college. So I didn't have a problem. I did not have a problem with them trying to tell me the, uh, uh, Darwinism. I didn't have a problem with any of that. It was all about creationism, and it was pretty cool. But they were all getting in because of, because of physics and science. They were all getting into uh, how how long how, were the seven days actually seven days or were they seven periods of time? And they got so technical they even tried to say the sixth day was different in time than the other days. I mean, it was some heavy duty stuff and I had to write an essay last night. Praise God, I got a hundred on it, but that was my opinion. He wanted my opinion, so I gave him, <laughs> I gave, I said, I give my opinion, there's no problem. And, uh, 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 but it was all deep. I'm talking about, talk, talk about getting deep. It was so deep. It's the deepest I have ever, and I've been pastoring and been preaching for 30 years. It's the deepest I ever got on Genesis chapter one it was last night in college. It was, it was amazing. I was up to 1 o'clock this morning working on Genesis. 
chapter 1, especially verse 1. Yeah, from high, yeah, up to 1 o'clock working on Genesis chapter 1. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here we go. So, so, so you're getting it deep, but it can go a lot deeper, and we're not. Because we don't want to boggle us down. But I got a little bogged down last night. So, that's the verse that God challenged me in prison with the other night about validity of the Bible. Uh-huh. Again, God created the heavens and the earth. He said, that ain't right. It is, because that's actually talking about the, actually talking about the universe. No, you know it's right. He's talking about the original King James. The original first, you know, King James just said heaven. Yeah. And that was the tried and true. Why does it say heavens? Because God actually, and, and, and here we're going to go heavy, and I don't want to go so heavy, because you're going to get to the gap theory. Uh, it is believed, and this is the gap theory, it is believed that between Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, let me get, let me get the King James here. Let me get the King James here, old King James. This, you know the King James, that's cool, that's what Paul preached out of. <laughs> yeah, right. Moses and Pope shit up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, now the reason people like to go to the King James, the King James is the oldest and has been verified. It is the oldest and it was actually written for the common man. Now, up until this time, you just about had to be able to speak other kind of languages before you could actually do it. But King James come along and he said, we want something for the commoners. And so the common people, so you don't have to have some kind of degree in theology to read it. So that's what it is. There's something called, and again, it's a theory. It is just a theory. Uh, and a theory is something that, that has been tested. It has been tested, but even though it's been tested, it's not 100% because nobody was there to test, nobody was there to see it. Who was there uh, of us? God was, but who was uh, who, who who was by who was there? And I, I heard the joke: You're so old when God said that every light that you turn the switch on, you know, stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> they ask you to flip the switch. No, I'm talking. About, here it is. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. It says heaven, but but some of the other, when you look into the Hebrew, it's heaven, so it's like the universe. It is proven by science. It looks like everything was created all at once, which is cool. That means God did it. We know that. Mm -hmm. And it's the Big Bang. And when the, what caused the Big Bang? That's the problem. What caused the Big Bang? And it was God. God said, okay, yeah, so, yeah, there it was. Yeah, and so there started the spinning, and when it started the spinning, here comes, here comes the, as, it, as things broke off, there was the planets and all this stuff. We won't get into all that, but in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That word there is, is uh, Ra, which is the word Hebrew word for create, out of nothing. Then, when you go to chapter 2, I mean, verse 2, now all of a sudden, the words start changing. It's recreate. So, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the earth. Uh, the earth was without form and an empty waste, and darkness was upon the face of the great deep. Darkness is always a sign of judgment. Okay, so there's a darkness, sin. It's a sign of sin, but it's also a sign of judgment. And so the empty waste is, that's the sign where judgment has been. So it's believed that Satan and his angels, that's when he tricked one third of the angels, and that's when he came and, and he, he came in. And the gap theory, he, that's between Genesis 1 and 1 and 1 and 2 is where Satan did his thing and how he wanted to get kicked out of heaven. And he caused God's creation to be marred. So then the Bible says the Spirit of God moved over the face of the waters, and now God says, Let there be light, and there was light. And, and so again, this is the redemption story, and these first few verses is also the redemption story. Uh, you can take a, a person in their life, and I thought about doing it, and take a person's life, and when you do this, the very first thing when somebody is born again is they have light in their life. They can see again. Okay? So, so there it goes. But again, that's the gap theory. But again, that's using two different words. One's created from nothing, and the other is uh, recreated. So that's where that comes from. Uh, if you have a finished... Jake's Bible, he believes that. He's he got it in his Bible. Also, a lot of Pentecostals will go along with the gap theory. There's something called the New Earth, the New Earth theory, which, which most Christians 
go with the new earth saying it's only like 6,000 years old. The more I see the gap theory, the gap theory actually believes in the old earth. I mean, we don't know how old it was before he said, before he came across and started fixing things in the recreation. So in the gap theory, the, the recreation is 6,000 years old. But that is between Genesis 1 and 1 and, and Genesis 1 and 2, the dinosaurs. We cannot deny the dinosaurs, they're there. Uh, you cannot, you, you can't deny all this stuff. It's there. The fossil fuel, all the stuff that we're, we're drove up here on the fossil fuel. We were heating this place with fossil fuel. So as, as a guarantee, those dinosaurs did run this earth. There was a time. It was also possible that when Noah's flood came, it's possible that when the flood hit the earth, that it shifted the earth on its axis. And when it shifted the earth on its axis, up until Noah's time, guys, it would be really, really old, 900 years old, all that. Because we had a greenhouse effect in the green. You want people to heal in space because a high oxygen level caused people to heal fast. So when you get to, when you get after you see Noah, all of a sudden now things start changing. Earth now has rain. It didn't have rain before. It had a greenhouse effect. Now it's got rain. It's possible it got shifted on its axis. They have found mastodons actually with grass in their mouth up in, and up, up, up north. They found them with grass in their mouth. They were actually eating when they were frozen. It was a flash freeze. So the earth would have had to have been shifted on its axis for it to be a flash freeze. So they have found animals, old dinosaurs with food in their mouth actually preserved. So again, you got Noah's flood and you've got Genesis 1 and 1 and 1 and 2 that take care of all of them. All of that. Now, let's get back over here <laughs> to this side. I don't even forgot how we got on this bunny trail, but it weren't a bunny trail because it was a good question. But I'm hoping that... You were talking about your... Class. That's how your I class. Yeah, yeah, and that's how... I'm it. the one that said something about the guy challenged me on... Oh, the yeah. Okay. No, tonight, well, tonight my challenge is... Tonight my challenge is going to be with Noah's, Noah's flood. And, and a bunch of stuff in Noah's flood and, and how it shaped the earth. So, so again, it's heavy duty, it's real science, it's not make-believe science, it's real stuff, but it's science that's got God in it. And I love that thought. They also tell us about the science that does not have God in it, and I understand that too, and that's fine. Okay.